Hello, my lovely anatomists and physiologists. Let's take a look at the differences between arteries and veins. Now I've got a nice little table here so we can do an easy compare and contrast. So I have just two columns, one for artery and the other for vein. And then I've got the artery color coded as red and the veins color coded as blue because remember, Remember, in that systemic circuit, arteries are going to carry oxygenated blood. And so we're going to see oxygenated blood represented by red. Although remember, in the pulmonary circuit, they're going to be transporting deoxygenated blood. So that's kind of like an exception to our rule. And then the same kind of story we can do for veins. So remember with your veins in the systemic circuit, we're gonna see them transporting deoxygenated blood. And so that's why we see the color uh, blue associated. And then in the case of the veins, we'll see in the pulmonary circuit transporting oxygenated blood. So again, that's like our exception here. As we talk about these, I think it's better to do arteries are always away from the heart. So that's true universally whereas the veins are always moving toward the heart. And that's true universally, meaning whether we're in the systemic or the pulmonary circuit, okay? When we look at the structure of the arteries, we'll see that they have thick walls. So those three uh, layers or three tunics, the tunica externa, media, and intima are gonna be just thicker compared to the veins. So the veins we can say have thinner walls or thin walls by comparison. We'll see that the artery has what's described as a small lumen. And if you're not familiar with the term lumen, that's just talking about the inner space, the inner cavity um, of the vessel. So this is where the blood is flowing through. And so this small lumen is important because it's going to help maintain the blood pressure in the art arterial system, whereas the veins are going to have a large and an irregular shaped lumen. And so one of the other important things that we'll see is the arteries are going to have a very high blood pressure, whereas the veins are going to have a very low blood pressure. And let's stop for just a minute and make sense of that. So the artery, remember, it has blood being pumped directly from the heart into the artery. And so you get all that push from that heart, from those contractions of the heart, moving that blood through the artery. And this is really good because this is helping to push the blood through the whole circuit. The artery, remember, is carrying the blood actually to your capillaries in order to allow for some exchange. And so maintaining this pressure is gonna be important and actually getting all of that blood moving to all those capillaries. And then we'll see that will be important in actually getting material nutrients, oxygen, and so forth out of the capillary to your tissue. And then on the flip side of that, when we're talking about the vein, it's on the other side of the capillary. It's moving back towards the heart. It's usually like moving against gravity. Um, and so we don't see that force in the veins the same way we do in the arteries, okay? And so part of the differences in the structure of the two vessels, you know, is related to this artery has this high blood pressure and the veins have this low blood pressure. And then 
helping, you know, understand like the thick walls and the thin walls. Let's also add to that, that um, we have a very thick tunica media, meaning lots of muscle in the artery. This is like the thickest layer in the artery. So if we're thinking about clothes, and we said the tunica externa was like the winter coat, and then the tunica media was like the sweater, and then the tunica intima was like the undershirt. In the case of the artery, like they have such a thick sweater on that they only put on like a windbreaker. Maybe we can think about it like that. I mean, it's that's maybe a bad analogy, but okay, let's just run with it. In terms of your veins, um, they're going to have their thickest layer is going to be the tunica externa. So now the analogy works pretty well. So they don't have a thick sweater on. They don't have as much smooth muscle. And so they do need to have like a really nice, thick, fluffy winter coat. When we talk about that artery and we talk about it having to withstand all this blood pressure, what we'll see is a lot of elasticity. And so that's allowing the artery to maintain itself as it gives us push of blood, push of blood, push of blood. And so what we'll see is we have these extra kind of layers. We have what's described as an external elastic membrane. Oops. The external elastic membrane is going to be located just in your large arteries. And it's going to be between the tunica externa and the tunica media. The elastic, the external elastic membrane is between the tunica externa and the tunica media. And then you have an internal elastic membrane. And this one is going to be in the tunica intima layer. And you'll see it again just in your large arteries. So we'll see that some of our arteries are described as elastic arteries. And these are gonna be closest to the heart. And they're gonna be the set that have to deal with the highest pressure, right? Because they're closest to the heart. So they're taking on all that initial pressure during that ventricular ejection, yeah? So like aorta would be an excellent example, right? And then we have what's called a muscular artery. And so the muscular artery um, is going to be a little bit further away. So it's gonna go from an elastic artery and then gradually change into the muscular artery. And the muscular artery has the lead role in the vasoconstriction. Muscular arteries, they're named because of that huge tunica media layer. And so all that muscle is gonna be important in vasoconstriction. When we look back at the veins, we left off talking about the vein as having the low blood pressure. And we mentioned that it does not have as much muscle in the wall. And so what we're going to see also is that this blood is moving often against gravity. So it's going from your feet back up towards your heart, right? It doesn't have a lot of pressure to push it. It doesn't have a lot of muscle to the vein wall to assist. And so we do have to deal with this potential for blood to flow backward. 
So instead of toward the heart, like back toward the feet. And so what we see is that veins have valves. And so this is something that's special about veins. We don't see this in our other vessels. And these valves are gonna be important to prevent backflow of blood. So it's helping to promote movement towards the heart. And so we're gonna talk more about this in the future. We're going to see too that our veins have what's called capacitance, which is talking about this ability to expand. And we won't really see this with our artery because that artery has such a thick wall and a thick layer of muscle is so round, it doesn't really have room to expand. And what we're gonna see also then kind of with our vein is that 64%, 64% of the blood volume in your body is actually in your vein. So, so if you're blood, you're spending more time in the vein, yeah, anywhere else. Now this is really significant. This means we get what's called a venous reserve. And so when we talk about like blood flow and when we talk about maintaining blood pressure, we have this ability to increase our venous return to the heart. I think we've mentioned that a little bit already. So we get this venous re re reserve. We have 21% of the blood is like hanging out in the liver, in the bone marrow, and in the integument. So what this means is if we are bleeding, if we're bleeding, if we're losing some blood on some level, we can maintain our blood pressure and blood volume by accessing this venous reserve. So we can do that for a period of time, short period of time, but a period of time while we um, kind of regulate that. All right, up next, we're gonna look at the relationship of all of the vessels together and um, moving from there, talking specifically about capillaries. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.